welcome to services. Uh, on this day of Pentecost, it's, it's an exciting day. We're going to talk about what Pentecost really was about. I grew up thinking it was the day that it was all about the Holy Spirit, but there's actually a, a deeper meaning to Pentecost. So we're going to talk about that a little later. But that's right part now. of church that I really like to emphasize. It should be fun. It should be exciting. It's God's house. He says, come, relax. Don't worry about what's out there for an hour. Honestly, we shouldn't worry about what's out there anyway, but in here it's definitely between you and God. So let's just take a moment and just prepare our hearts. Let's just give God the moment. Let's say a prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, our world has seen more turmoil in the last few months than any of us have ever, ever noticed. Lord, it's, it's hard. But as we know, if we give it to you, if we give our turmoils to you, you'll take care of them for us. Not always in a way that we understand, but in a way that we can have peace because we know that you are in charge. That you are going to work with this. Lord, this world's out of our hands. You told us it would be many, many times. Your son came to show us what the world will do without faith. Lord, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. Strengthen us and just give us your peace. And we just pray this all in your name. Amen. 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 Please rise to your Our service this morning will be coming from, with one voice, the service of the word. But as always, we start with our confession. Our time to give God everything that's in our hearts to let him know that we are, we are his. We can't do anything more than to confess to our God. So as we start this morning, let us open in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take this moment. You're in God's house. Talk to him like a father and say, Father, I'm sorry. And just, just open your heart to him. Please join me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we be delighted in you and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sin. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's more than we can imagine being totally forgiven. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace. We, can, we know it by our ways or our actions that we are, we are sharing our peace. That's me for you. That's me. That's me. That means more than you'll ever know. It's just watching that. 
All right, we will continue our service with our with our opening hymn. Awesome. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Heavenly Father, on this day of Pentecost, help us to understand what it is all about. First, that we are to stop and acknowledge your dominion over this earth. And second, that you send us your spirit to help us understand what this all means. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, our first reading. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Numbers, chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. Numbers, chapter 11. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And he took some of the power of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, on them they prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men, whose names were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since you spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our psalm is 25, verses 1 through 15. I will read the odd verses of the congregation, and please respond in the even verses. Psalm 25. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are your own. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good enough, my Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Jews from every nation under heaven. 
When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galilean, Galilean? Sorry. Then now, is it that each of us, then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthenians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, sorry. Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Nigeria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then, he, then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the day by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our holy gospel this morning comes to us from John in the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John 7, 37 through 39. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not been yet been glorified. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Now, some might question how the gospel is this long, and my poor reader had three pages, but that's just one of the joys sometimes. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So today is the day of Pentecost. So you think the miracle of Pentecost was real? I mean, do you really think the Spirit came on the disciples? Well, I'll tell you what, the answer is yes. I mean, somebody might ask, how do you know that for sure? Well, it's pretty simple. The Bible tells us so. The written proof of God tells me. And that's pretty much all I need. But I also have one other thing going for me. I feel it. The Spirit's in my being. He, he, he guides me. He, he watches me. He's my daily guide. There's no doubt. It's like I've said before, though. We can suppress the power of the Spirit. We can ignore God. God is truly a gentle giant right now. See, the power of God is in us. He won't put a stranglehold on us. He won't make us believe it. He won't make us to obey. He simply waits for us to accept it. And you know, maybe that's the part that we take for granted. I say for now because there is a time when God will come back and he will be king. 
But right now, some religions portray God as a mighty fist waiting to crush us. You know, the question I always ask him is, why is he waiting? Aren't we cruel enough already that, he, that we deserve our punishment? Probably long ago. They never have an answer for that. So that's why we always have to distrust and believe in our God. That's probably one of the most some other, other term, mind-blowing parts of our God we can't understand. The one true creator and sustainer of the universe. He wants us to find him. He wants us to know him. As I said, he won't force you to believe it. But I guarantee you, he gives us reasons that we can't deny it. I mean... If we humble our heart and look around, we cannot deny that God is with us. So the theme of our, our day, like I said, is Pentecost. History of Pentecost is the fact that it was a Jewish festival. Many don't realize that. The actual definition from the, from the Bible dictionary is the De Pentecost, the definition is 50th day. The definition is a solemn festival of the Jews, so called because it is celebrated on the 50th day after the 16th of Nisan, which is the second day of the Passover. It was called the Feast of Weeks because it was celebrated seven weeks after the Passover. Now, get this. This is what Pentecost was about what it is about. It was initiated to oblige the people to return to the temple of the Lord, there to acknowledge his absolute dominion over the country, and offer him the first fruits of their harvest, also that they might call to mind and give thanks to God. Give thanks to God for the law which he has given them on, at Sinai on the 50th day from their departure from Egypt. Interesting, isn't it? That's what Pentecost means. That we come together and give God acknowledgement for being king of this world. <laughs> See, that's why there were so many people in Jerusalem at that time. And I truly believe that's why God did what he did. There was a large gathering. The masses were there. What better place to show his power? You know, he's good at that. He knows when to, when to make a point. Whether it's in a, a large group or just in each one of our hearts. God knows when to, when to give us that, that extra nudge. So that's no doubt why the, the disciples were together that day. We heard in our, our reading from Acts, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Okay. They were together for Pentecost, for the, for the ceremony of acknowledging. So they were gathered in one house together. Now remember, Jewish houses, there were normally one large room. There wasn't like ours where you had a whole bunch of different places. So you can imagine all the all the disciples were sitting around, reclining, sitting, however you'd like it. Probably discussing life and their situation since Jesus' crucifixion. You know, think about it. They were probably praying together. I mean, remember, they were in a state of wonder yet. Jesus told them not to leave until the sign from heaven was revealed. Acts 1, 4, and 5. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so here they were. Nothing had happened yet. 
They had him in an wondering, what was this going to look like? They had to be in anticipation of what was going to happen. I mean, Jesus said this. A gift promised by the Father through his Son. I mean, that was big. But what was it? I just, I, I imagine the disciples sitting around going, what's, what's going to happen? And just like Jesus promised, it happened. To repeat Acts 2, verses 3 and 4, they, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Wow. There it was. Now put yourself in one of those one of those men's position. They were baptized with fire. The gift that was promised by the Father happened just right. Boom, there it was. And they spoke in tongues as the Spirit named them. We tell the story, but I don't know if we really immerse ourselves in, in the story sometimes. So the question I have for you, does that happen today? Do people speak in tongues? It's rare in our country, I will say that. I think it's because we suppress the Spirit. We, we deny it, we fight it too much. Gina and I were told of such an, of an experience from a pair of young missionaries they were acquainted with. Their names are Brandon and Anne Marie. Very young, wonderful young couple we know from Matt and Pierce. So they met preparing for, for mission work for overseas. She was a New York girl, and he was a Nebraska boy. And that's a story in itself when you take your Nebraska boy home to meet your parents and walk through New York City. But, you know, God had a plan. See, Brandon's parents were, were friends of ours from, from back when. Dean was, Dean was the dad. He was Brandon's dad. He, he was at my greeting Christmas table. Did we can you? God back control of my life. See, I had to say, I gave him back control because he had it originally and I took it away from him. And I said, God, here I am. And then Dean was actually killed in China on a mission trip a few years later. But you know what? That didn't stop the family. They're still devoted to spreading the word and doing their, doing their, their work. So as I was saying, Brandon and Anne Marie were, were living in China. This is we talked to them one night at their at their folks' house. They were living in a, an apartment building. And Anne Marie said the, the little old lady that owned the place sat by the front door every day, pretty much all day. They had given her a translated Bible, a Chinese Bible. Well, the old woman was full of questions all the time. One afternoon as the kids were coming home, the old woman tried to ask Anne Marie some questions about what was in the mind. To Brandon's amazement, Anne Marie started to explain the word of the Bible to the old lady in Chinese. She didn't know Chinese. Brandon said he was overwhelmed to say the least, but Anna Marie didn't even realize she was doing it. It just happened. We went back to their room and he said, You know what you were doing? I'll just tell her about what the Bible says. He said, You were doing it in Chinese. Do you understand that? She said, No, I was not. <laughs> there it is. It happens around us and we don't even see it. <laughs> it's, it was such a true example of the power of the Spirit with two young people that have 
dedicated their lives to God. You know, there are people in this world who hear these real life experiences and are overjoyed and intrigued. I was one of them. I want to repeat a part of our reading again, just for the mere the strength of it. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one had heard their own language being spoken. I really amazed, they asked, are all these who are speaking Galileans? How then is it that each of us hears them in our own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of our God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Think of that one. How could you explain it? It's like Brandon trying to tell Anne Marie, you were speaking in Chinese. The power of the Spirit is so huge, and we sometimes think we have more power. Now, the unfortunate part is there are some of those in the crowd who wouldn't give up the control of their own opinions. Who wouldn't humble their hearts to the very thing they were seeing and hearing. But so goes human behavior. Verse 13. Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. You know, God tells us there are those who won't know him because they'll choose not to. From their own opinion, from their own their own set way of thinking, they won't they won't agree. So I have to ask as a preacher, where are your thoughts when we read the miracles and the promises of the Bible? Are they open to amazement? Are, are you open to the mystery of the Holy Spirit? Of course, it's not really a mystery. Jesus told us to expect it. But like so many things in faith, we have to give up our own opinions. We have to be born again. I think that's what scares many. After all, this is how I've done things all my life. This is how I do things. I always will. No, Pentecost. It was instituted to oblige the people to return to the temple of the Lord. There to acknowledge his absolute dominion over the country. That is just such a strong definition. To acknowledge God's dominion over this country, over this world, because He's never given it away. No matter how many people on earth declare their ownership, when it's done, there's one true owner. The king will return, take dominion over his kingdom. But as I said, He's an overwhelming. A mind blowing king. He says, I want you to know me. I want you to love me. He said, I'm going to send you a spirit. I'm going to send you my spirit to help you to understand everything about faith so you don't have to wonder. Wow. How can we lose? How can we lose? So I, I just have to close and ask him that you just please allow your, your mind to open your heart to accept the most amazing gift of all the love of a God who will never leave you lost if you ask him for correction let us celebrate 
the day of Pentecost the right way by acknowledging God's dominion. Father, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, you, you are God. <clears throat> you will come back and take control of your kingdom someday, which is a good thing. Lord, I, I can't help but feel that many feel that that's, that's hard or scary. But with a king like you, we can't lose. Lord, with your guidance, we will all live in paradise. Lord, help us to celebrate the day of Pentecost as you would have it. Just praising you for being God. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit to teach us how to help us through and to guide us. And we just pray this all in your, your Holy Son's name. Amen. Please rise as you are. Living in, living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us pray for all people that are in their need and in their unknown need. Oh, please pray with me. Under Heavenly Father, we come to you today in so much need. Lord, our world has lost the ability to acknowledge you as God. Lord, as we watch our our world struggle as we watch our world struggle with the riots and the and the violence and all that is going on Lord we see that someone else is guiding them Heavenly Father we need your spirit strong and and loud in us to to re-guide people Heavenly Father, Satan is doing his best to tear this world apart. Lord, I ask you for the strength and power as your Christians, as your people, to hold strong, to hold tight to your word, to your guidance, to just keep shining the light to those that are following the wrong words. Oh, Heavenly Father, they'll become exhausted before long. And then they'll have to look for that living water that Jesus Christ promised us that will be in us called the Holy Spirit. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, continue to be our God, continue to be our guide, continue to love us. In your mercy. Yeah. Oh, dear Jesus. I can only imagine what Jerusalem sounded like on the day you were crucified. People were hollering and chanting things that they had no idea why, except that others were doing it too. They did not know what they were doing, just like you told us. Oh dear Jesus, when you went to the cross for all of us, and you said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know, they don't know what they do. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us to say the same to all of our fellow human beings that make mistakes. Help us to know those that are, are doing it by accident and those that are doing it 
intentionally. Help us to understand why it's happening. Dear Jesus, you told us hate is worse than murder because it goes on forever. Please help us get through this hate. Lord, in your mercy. You are the oh, Holy Spirit, this is the day that you came. This is the day that God sent you into us. You are God's power in us. Help us to know you. Help us to feel you. Help us to follow your guidance in teaching us who Jesus is, who our Father in heaven is, who our triune God is. Holy Spirit, fill our nation with good and force Satan is in his dominion of, of evil back. Holy Spirit, we just pray this to find peace while these trials are going on. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, our triune God, each part is here to guide us. In your wisdom, you've given us every chance from a heavenly voice to a humanly body to a spiritually spiritual power. Help us to grasp onto that and hold on tight. And though you tell us that we will live through persecution and trials and the world will get very hard, those who trust in you will be saved. Let your Heavenly Father, I say a prayer of thanks for filling this church with your people. I pray for all those, again, that don't know you. That after they get exhausted with the world's chasing, they come to you and say, I need to be born again. Because where I've been living is not good. Lord, we just put all those people into your hands, all those that are sick or, or ill or fighting personal issues. We put them all in there into your hands so they can give it to you and find peace. The peace that you promised. And we just pray this all in Jesus' precious name through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As I started this last week, that's our offering. That we need to we need to remember that God is our God. So, let us pray the operatory prayer. Gracious God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you, and with the church and all the ages, we give thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ah, <clears throat> uh, as we're ending our as our we're ending our service, there's a prayer that we can pray, that tells, tells all to our Father. And if we pray from our heart, he will hear us and he will love us. So please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ah, with 
praying that prayer, our Father's answer is his benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, now with the peace and the strength and the power of the Spirit, and knowing that we can acknowledge our God as dominion over all, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.